Hello everyone, my name is Heine Elias and I am an art and cultural historian and a lecturer in the field of Chinese studies in the Faculty of Asian and Middle Eastern Studies at Cambridge. I am here to talk about paper 2122 and C15, the Chinese tradition, Chinese art and visual culture, a course offered to students in the Faculty of Asian and Middle Eastern Studies and the History of Art Department in the Lent term. Overall, the course examines Chinese art and material culture from the Bronze Age to the present with a focus on dynastic and modern times. It provides an object and theme-based learning experience. You will learn about some of China's most important archeological excavations from the Bronze Age when magnificent vessels such as this altar set, food and wine containers used for ritual ceremonies and impressive sculptural forms were produced. They reveal the existence of complex and powerful societies with great wealth and rich artistic modes of representation of the afterlife and cosmological beliefs. We shall also look at the significance of the natural stone jade and its use in burial practices associated with early Chinese concepts on immortality. You will learn how by the second century BCE, archaic bronze vessels came to be replaced by clay effigies of everyday utensils, animals and humans made specifically for tomb burial. We shall look at the astounding necropolis of China's first emperor, famous for its vast subterranean terracotta army you see here, which represent, represented his vision of a single great universe he intended to rule in the afterlife. Another highlight of the course is its examination of the development of what's known as the white gold of China, porcelain. You will learn about its history, production process, and how new technologies, designs, shapes, and palettes were introduced from the Song Dynasty in the 12th century, such as the example here, to the Ming, and finally, the Manchurian rule of the Qing Dynasty in the 18th century. Under imperial patronage, magnificent pieces were made reflecting the emperor's own taste, as well as his position as the son of heaven, displaying the splendor of his rule. Chinese porcelain became the envy of the West, and we shall look at how it was exported and how it influenced European production and the taste for chinoiserie. If you have seen the Korean movie, Parasite, you may recall the importance of the scholar's rock. We shall look at the arts of the Chinese studio, scholar's studio, the importance of calligraphy, and the many tools and objects we find on the scholar's desk, including the very quirky natural rocks that provided that inspiration for this special elite group in society throughout history. The course concludes with an examination of the propaganda art of modern China. We also look at contemporary receptions of Chinese art and its collecting in the 20 and 21st centuries around the world. We shall consider current art market trends with an examination of some of the driving forces behind them. On a final note, the course also incorporates a day trip to the British Museum in London to view the Chinese galleries with the possibility of a handing session, COVID circumstances permitting, and a handling session at the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge. I thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me. I look forward to seeing you in January next year and wish you all a good summer and a good start to your academic year in October. Thank you.